And could I have the roll call, please? Chairman Hodge. Present. Councillor Backer. Here. Councillor Dill. Here. Councillor Lennon. Here. Councillor McKinney. Here. Councillor Rowe. Here. Councillor Swift Chaotic. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. We have one item on our agenda tonight, and that is consideration of the school budget. So I will open the public hearing right now. If um, anyone is here to speak for or against or neutral, I'd ask you to uh, come up to the podium, state your name and your address. And um, ask each of you, it's, um, our, our rules um, provide that everyone um, can speak at a public hearing, and we look forward to hearing from you. Um, I'd ask you to uh, keep your remarks um, concise and to the point. So if there's anyone here that would like to speak on the budget, now is the time. I've been known to gavel a public hearing closed after 10 or 15 seconds, so I <laughs> don't be shy. Well, my name is Peter Michaud. I live at 28 Old Fort Road. I hadn't planned to speak tonight, but somebody needs to. Um, my concern about this budget, about having it be voted in too low, now, I, I think the one that you're looking at now is the best that we can do in the circumstances. So I'm in favor of, of what you're looking at. But my concern about voting for a too, too low budget is that it's a matter of being penny wise and pound foolish. Uh, will it affect the tax rate? Sure, it'll affect the tax rate. Every municipal expense affects the tax rate. But it will also affect property values over time. And that's the pound foolish part. I think that we stand to lose far more by not funding our schools appropriately than we stand to gain from keeping our taxes low. And so I urge you to vote in the budget that's proposed now and to consider that also in the future for future budgets. Thank you, Thank Peter. You. Is there anyone else that would care to speak on the budget? And a couple more people coming in, so if there is no one else who's here to speak on the budget, I'm going to close the public hearing. There is. Hey, David, please don't be shy. Did you expect that? Hmm? Did you expect me to speak? Didn't I expect you to speak? No, you're a man of surprises, David. <laughs> Not in that vein. Um, I originally supported uh, to both the town council and to the school board an increase greater than 5.3 percent based on my analysis of the overwhelming rejection of 4.6 and the very close vote on 6.0. However, I've changed my mind. Um, I've been persuaded by the school board and by a very articulate member of this town council, I did communicate with Jim Rowe, that 5.3 is uh, what we need to do at this point in time to avoid a lot of potential harm to our town. Uh, the school board, I give great deference to. They balance the needs of the school, the need to get schools started, the need, disruption of schools, disruption of education, and, what the, and the needs of taxpayers, and they approve 5.3. Because they're the specialized agency, I give them great deference. And, I, and then I spoke with email with Jim, and he gave me uh, also some excellent arguments about the effect on the town about the continued divisiveness, the expense, the need to get the taxes out at a certain time. And the simple point that, uh, that this compromise is not going to be something that advocates on either side is going to like. I don't like it. I'm sure the ones on the other side don't like it. But reasonable people have to do what's reasonable in the circumstances. And I consider myself a reasonable person. I support it. I will make phone calls. I'll hold signs. I'll do everything I did before to support 5.3. I would just like to know, I, I tried to figure out why anybody would not want to vote for 5.3 given our circumstances, and I could not come up with a reason. I looked at uh, whether they want to use comparisons to other peer schools, and with 5.3 we're still behind our other peer schools. 
if you compare it to the state budget, we're still at or near with the 5.3. We're, we're before we we're at or near the state average, now we'll be slightly above the state average. That's not what CAPE has always thought of itself. Is there waste? Well, I don't see it. I attend many of the budget hearings. We qualified for the administrative school district. We're below per pupil expenditures versus our peers and around the state average. We're now cutting people in programs. I, I see no waste. Um, and I, I do want to tell you, uh, is the cost too great? And I, and I want to tell you something, which I'm sure you're all aware of, but the CPI index, which is considered to be below the true inflation for schools and government, for July is 5.6. For June is 5.0 on an annual basis. So if we approve 5.3, which I support, we are not meeting the inflation rate, if it continues for the whole year, for uh, the CPI index. And I think that's going to have significant consequences. But given our circumstances, given disruption to the town, the divisiveness, as well as the need to get school started, um, I think people don't know want to consider that. But this is a, this is a, a real bare bones budget. Um, and then, quite frankly, I looked at what is, what is the 5.3? Well, we can't go below 4.6 as voted down. 5.3 versus 4.6 is about 25 bucks a year for the medium household. That comes out to about $2.30 a month or $0.07 cents a day. If you can't afford that, and there are some that probably can't, that's what the circuit breaker is for. 20% of this town qualify for the circuit breaker, and, and they should use it. That's why it's there. But if you can actually say to yourself that I'm in the 80%, but I can't afford $0.07 cents a day or 2 bucks a month, I don't know how you can look at yourself in the mirror in the morning. Um, I don't like the, personally like the 5.3, but I will push hard for it. And for many reasons. One, I'm a, I consider myself a good Cape citizen. I, I want to end the divisiveness. I think, according, and I again will quote Jim, which will be twice, that I look forward in the future to maybe uh, building some bridges and trying to avoid this kind of turmoil in the future. But the main reason is I want to look at myself in the morning, and I can't do it if this budget doesn't pass. Thank you. Thank you, David. Is there anyone else that would care to speak to this? Hello, I'm Frank Governale. I live on 18 Old Ocean House Road. In support of the 5.3% budget compromise, I'd like to make two comments, one on fairness and the other on priorities. First on fairness, I believe that inadequate funding for schools threatens the premise of public education, which promises equal education for all regardless of economic status. With constrained budgets of the last several years, we're increasingly shifting the burden of maintaining our excellent schools to the parents. That's just not right. It's not fair. Education is a public good that we all benefit from, whether it's in bringing up better citizens or maintaining our own property values. So in cutting vital programs or courses or introducing pay for play, we run the risk of creating a two-tier school system where those with less means get less, and those who can afford it hire tutors, get SAT coaches, pay for higher level classes, have adequate educational technology at home while the classes, classrooms lack the technology, and if you're a middle schooler, if your middle schooler plays three team sports, be, be prepared to shell out almost $300, according to the town website. So instead of everyone in town paying a little extra in property taxes, middle school parents may pay an extra $300 plus whatever their fair share of the property tax increase will be. This is a regressive tax, and it places incremental burden on the lower income families. Do we want an unfair two-tier educational system? I don't think so. With the 5.3% budget, we're not close to compensating for five years of capped budgets that saw our spending decline sharply compared with the rest of the state. Yet at this point, we should vote for this budget and look forward. The opponents to the earlier 6% budget proposed proposal asked why our taxes were rising so much this year compared with other towns. And it's a simple answer. From 2001 to 2006, the growth in spending per student in Cape was 44% lower than surrounding towns. And with the 5.3% budget, CAPE spending per student is still barely at the state average and below all surrounding towns, with the exception of Scarborough. The second point is on priorities. I don't think it's a question of whether or not we have the resources in this town to adequately fund our schools. It's a question of whether adequately funding our schools is our top priority. In my opinion, there is no more important spending priority than our schools, both because we're fulfilling our obligation to educate the young and we're supporting our own property values. Yet I think it would be worthwhile to reconsider some of the priorities in these tough economic times. The town council is considering spending $850,000 to 
on the intersection of 77 and Shore Road. $500,000 of this amount will come directly from Cape Elizabeth residents. Couldn't this money be better invested in energy saving projects to help future school budgets? Only 10% of the recent $2.5 million borrowing by Cape in the spring was dedicated to school specific projects. Recently, in the front of town hall was beautifully re landscaped. I don't know how much it cost, where the money came for it, but how many old textbooks could have been replaced with that money? And also keep in mind, we will now be one of the few school districts in the state with no curriculum coordinator, and we're in a minority in the state where middle school parents have to pay to let their kids play sports. So it seems to me that this budget debate can open a door for a fuller discussion of town-wide priorities that we could all benefit from. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would care to speak? Dan Fishbein, Salt Spray Lane. Actually, I could, couldn't have said it any better than what the last speaker said. Um, it seems we have very short memories, and we focus only on the immediate issue in front of us. As, as the last speaker said, the last five years, we've had increases that were well below the, the state average. We, we had one year, I think, where our tax rate went up only by about, I think it was 1.2%. So rather than looking at the multi-year, everybody seems to focus on just what's going on this year. And what's going on this year is we're trying to just make up a little bit of the ground that we lost the last several years. And I've heard a lot of people in town talking a lot of, over this period of time. There seems to be a lot of misunderstandings. I hear people making comments, again, looking at just this year in isolation. But we have lower administrative costs than the state average. We are spending. Uh, just about at or slightly below the state average uh, per pupil. We spend less than many of our surrounding towns, substantially less per pupil than South Portland, for example. And to look at this year's attempt to make up just a little bit of ground in isolation seems to be very short-sighted. And I think we probably all need to do a better job of communicating uh, the full story. And unfortunately, since this process began, as David said, inflation has now risen to the point where the increase we're now looking at is actually less than the rate of inflation. So all the arguments that we've heard made about how could the taxes just in one year out of six go up higher than the rate of inflation no longer uh, apply as well. So I'm, uh, I think we, it's time to put this behind us. The school year is about to begin. Uh, and it, you know, eventually, we could be talking about 27 elections to go back and forth to decide whether it's 5.3 or 5.29. So it's probably time to just split the difference and have something that we can all live with. And hopefully, in future years, we, we, instead of ups and downs, little increases and big increases, we can call upon the, the town council to have a more stable slope of increases so that we can avoid this kind of issue in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, I'm Susan Spagnola, and I live at 2 Heatherstone Lane. Um, first, I'd like to thank the council members for their tireless service to our community. Second, I would like to ask each of you to support the school board approved 5.3% budget. This being the first year that residents may weigh in on the school budget, it has been an arduous process. What has become apparent to me as a result of the first two budget votes is that we are a divided community. Interestingly, Victoria Ogden identified these competing interests in an editorial she wrote for The Current in the spring of 2003, five years ago, as on the one hand, quote unquote, parents who want the school system to continue to be one of the best in the state, despite stagnant enrollments, and on the other hand, quote unquote, an aging population bearing a greater burden of rising property taxes. And as a community, we feel the weight of property taxes more than others because we have made the choice to have no commercial property tax base. I understand that we are all feeling the pinch of the current economy. We are all being forced to make difficult choices. However, one of these choices should not be the education of our children. Our schools, as Frank mentioned, have been forced to cut over the last 10 years. And during this time, our per pupil spending fell from 108% of the average of surrounding communities in 1997-1998 to 93% in 2006, 2007. And parents, many of whom cannot easily afford it, are being asked to finance field trips and school athletic fees. We have emerged an extremely efficient school system. And that's the reason for our exemption from consolidation. However, there is no more room to cut, except staff at this point, 
and as a result, we lost our curriculum director when the budget fell from 6% to 5.3%. To those of you who say our schools are fine, I would ask you to sit down and speak with some teachers who are each year being asked to do more with less. To those of you who say that enrollment is falling so we should be cutting staff, I would ask that you read the school board's discussion of why lower enrollment does not translate to fewer teachers given today's mandate environment. To those of you who say, I have no children in the schools, so why should I endure a 5.98% property tax increase? I would say, look at your property values. They are high because of our strong school system. Look at the vibrant and compassionate members of our community who give back in so many ways. They came here because of the schools. Most importantly, look at the young children in our schools who are our world's future leaders. They will only succeed if our schools remain strong. They should be, as Frank said, our common responsibility and our top priority. 5.3% will not move them ahead, but it will at least not have them fall behind. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? My name Michael Bowdler. It's, I'm in order speaking against the school budget, am I? Am I? We're speaking on the school budget, yes. Okay. For or against. I was shocked to read that the school absorbed 69% of their taxes. I don't know whether I'm reading the analysis correctly or not. 69% seems to be very extortionate. Look, just common sense. We spend more on schools than we do on any other thing. The only uh, yardstick criteria I have is my own education, the own um, formal schooling, which ran from age um, four till 14, and then we were out by law. There was no more schooling unless you were wealthy or well off. At that age, we went to work 48 hours a week. Now, we reached the standard of doing, we reached a very high standard of education by age 14. In math, we're doing algebra, trigonometry, solid and plane geometry. In geography, we knew all the, the, we could name almost every country in the world. And we had 360 pupils and nine teachers. That's 40 children in the class. And the only other adults staff in the school were a lady to teach the girls cooking and a, a male to teach the guys carpentry. That's when the sexist didn't claim to, you know, um, they knew which way they were. The other was a, um, a janitor, one man to look after a school full of 360. He looked after all the heating system maintenance and cleaned up all the classrooms. And when we got in the morning, got it arrived in the morning, everything was supplied. We did not have to take anything in the school, even a pencil. The ink was supplied and pen, not feathers, the pens. Um, <laughs> But all was supplied. There was no stress amongst the kids. I don't remember any stress because everything was provided and we, were, and we had the old system of teaching by parrot fashion, the tables. I don't know what's happening now, but when my son went to school, they didn't believe in teaching the tables. They thought it was brainwashing. And an elderly teacher took my son aside and taught him his tables. Now when he's, a group, when he's with a group of young people doing a job, he's the only one who knows his tables. That was the method we used. And um, I remember no stress. Now, if 360 kids can be taken care of by, um, what is it, nine? To elder, there was a headmaster. There was one headmaster. He had a telephone, but the telephone was covered in dust. He didn't, I don't think he ever used the telephone. Everything was very simple. It must have cost the, the, the public about five bucks a year to, to educate us. And if anybody doubts my word about the number of stuff, I have an old photograph here in 1938, which shows the numbers of teachers. The whole staff is 
on this photograph and there's 360 children. Now, it's my opinion, and I think in the opinion of uh, many others, maybe the silent majority, that education costs has run amok. Um, if we can reach the standards we did, as I say, algebra and trigonometry, uh, I'm using that as a standard, the, the other subjects like geography and history were equal, um, why is it taking so much money to do the same thing to kids that are there till they're 18? It's my opinion that the education system in the whole country is, is running amok. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Maria Sorensen, and, and I'm from Three Dean Way. And I'm here to support the school budget. Um, times have changed quite a bit over the years, and although my children are no longer in the school system, I wholeheartedly support uh, that the children coming up through the schools now be educated as well as my children were, and we need to support the school budget. We need to do everything we can to help these kids succeed, mm -hmm. because education is a lot cheaper than the alternatives. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Seeing none, I will declare this public hearing closed. Okay. Do we have a motion? We do. Jim? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I would move uh, that we adopt the proposed school department budget that has been most recently submitted uh, to the town council by the school board, including a 5.3 percent increase in expenditures, and as is uh, more fully explained in this evening's agenda, and also including uh, the submission of said budget to a public validation vote on September 2nd, 2008. Second. Okay. Discussion? Jim? Um, I'm going to support the motion. Uh, <laughs> we, Enough said. We, uh, I think, I, I sense that we've all reached a point in this process that I personally had hoped that we would have reached much earlier in the process. And that is uh, that we, I think we have reached a point where we have, we all have an appreciation uh, that we want good schools, but that has to happen within a, within a context. Uh, it's been my mantra throughout this process that, that whatever we want has to happen within a context. And uh, I think people are perhaps tired of hearing it from me, but I still believe it as I did back in April uh, when we began our budget deliberations here on the, uh, on the town council. Um, we are one town. We all want good schools, but we want to do it in a way that people can afford. And uh, that, that's been my... Uh, as I say, that's been my mantra throughout this. I think we are now at that point where we do have an appreciation that we all do want schools that are among the top in the nation and the top in the state. Uh, but we also have to understand that that has to take place within a framework uh, that is affordable for our citizens. So, thank you. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? So that to be unanimous. Okay, a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Show that to be unanimous. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. <laughs>